please stay muted during the presentation. You are also welcome to be off camera if you choose to be and type your name and agency in the chat for attendance purposes. Yet you may also choose to remain anonymous during the session as well. Before we begin, we will take a moment for a land and labor acknowledgement. We are currently occupying the unceded lands of many First Peoples, Coast Salish people, Muckleshoot, Suquamish, Stillaguamish, and Duwamish. We acknowledge and thank local First Nations for their centuries of land stewardship that long predates the arrival of European settlers. We honor those who are still struggling for recognition and reparations for historical acts of genocide and ongoing erasure. We remind you to be aware of the spaces you occupy locally, that these lands were stolen from the first people in the name of white settler colonialism, and that you seek ways to continue your education and give back to the local indigenous tribes. And this is from the Duwamish tribes website. We must acknowledge that much of what we know of this country today, including its culture, economic growth and development throughout history and across time, has been made possible by the labor of enslaved Africans and their ascendants who suffered the horror of the transatlantic trafficking of their people, chattel slavery and Jim Crow. We are indebted to their labor and their sacrifice. We must acknowledge the tremors of that violence throughout the generations and the resulting impact that can still be felt and witnessed today. And that quote is by Dr. Tara T.J. Stewart. Documents received by the City of Seattle will become public record and are subject to public disclosure. So just a little brief bit about that, the State of Washington's Public Records Act under Washington state law states all materials received or created by the city of Seattle are considered public records. These records include, but are not limited to, RFQ narrative responses, budget worksheets, board rosters, and other RFQ materials, including written and or electronic correspondence. Please be sure to read this slide later in its entirety, and this information is also posted in the guidelines and application. Now, I would like to introduce you to the other HSD staff who are here with me today to present this RFQ. Those will be myself, and we also have Chris Clayson, Director of HSD's Homelessness Division. We have Christina Corpy, the Unified Care Team Outreach Manager, and Natalie Thompson, Director of HSD's Business Operations. In our agenda today, we will be covering the timeline, the introduction of this RFQ, the services and program model, the application and submission instructions, and we will be taking questions at the end. Please note that any questions answered here today are not official answers. All questions and answers will be posted on the Funding Opportunities website within five business days that they are received. And with that, I am going to hand it over to Chris to provide an overview of the RFQ. Good morning, everybody, and thanks so much for attending today. Uh, going to get into an overview of this RFQ in a moment, but before I do that, I uh, just want to start off and go over this uh, procurement timeline. Uh, the RFQ itself was released last week on Thursday, June 13th, and today, June 21st, we're holding the virtual information session. From now until Friday, June 28th at 5 p.m., interested parties may submit questions about the RFQ to HSD. Once submitted, HSD will have a response within five days that will be posted to the RFQ's Funding Opportunities webpage. Later on in this presentation, we'll also share information on where those questions can be sent. Uh, the most important deadline is Friday, July 19th at 12 p.m., which is when interested parties must submit their complete application packets to HSD. 
The review and rating process will then commence on July 22nd through August 7th. HSD expects that RFQ awards will be announced on September 9th, and subsequently the deadline for award appeals from agencies is four business days later on September 13th. The last key date is the contract start date for awarded agencies, which is on January 1st, 2025. One final note, HSD does reserve the right to adjust dates, so please be sure to check back to the RFQ's website, especially around these key deadlines. With uh, that out of the way, I now want to uh, turn and provide an overview on this funding opportunity. With the 2024 Street-Based Outreach Services for Unsheltered Individuals, RFQ, HSD is seeking applicants uh, for applications from qualified agencies to establish a citywide team-based outreach model throughout all of Seattle's neighborhoods. Qualified agencies will work together and with HSD to ensure a collaborative approach to outreach is employed with the goal of bringing unsheltered individuals indoors and supporting them on a path to permanent housing. This RFQ is open and competitive with approximately $6.2 million available to award. There are two types of outreach interventions eligible for funding. The first is neighborhood specific outreach conducted within geographic areas. And the second population specific outreach conducted citywide to specific groups of individuals. More details on each intervention will be provided in a moment. Initial awards again will be made for the period of January 1st, 2025 through December 31st, 2025. While it is the city's intent to renew these agreements resulting uh, from the RFQ on an annual basis through 2028, future funding is contingent upon performance and funding availability. The outreach services requested through this RFQ represent a critical component of our region's efforts to address homelessness. The recently released 2024 point in time count provided findings speaking to the large scale need for unsheltered outreach services. Within the Seattle King County region, it was found that there are 16,385 individuals experiencing homelessness. 60% of these individuals are unsheltered and require immediate assistance to come indoors. We also know that not all groups experience homelessness the same way. The point in time count reinforced that BIPOC communities continue to be disproportionately impacted by homelessness. Such communities comprise 49% of our region's homeless individuals, but just 47% of the overall county population. For other groups, the consequences of homelessness can be particularly significant. For instance, youth and young adults who experience unsheltered homelessness are at a higher risk of involvement in the juvenile justice system, substance use, and mental health conditions than their peers. Efforts such as the Unified Care Team have been successful in connecting individuals to shelter. However, this work has also shown that there are many others who decline these services and require more intensive engagement. With this background in mind, the following priority and focus populations were selected for this RFQ to ensure HSD's investments are dedicated to addressing the aforementioned disparities and meeting the diverse needs of our unsheltered neighbors to bring them indoors and on a path to permanent housing. HSD defines priority populations as a group comprising a specific demographic or having a specific issue in common. Priority populations for this investment include individuals experiencing unsheltered homelessness, including those residing in RVs or vehicles, unaccompanied youth and young adults aged 24 and under who are unsheltered, and people experiencing barriers to services due to severe and persistent behavioral health issues. Focus populations are defined as specific racial or ethnic groups within the priority population who have data showing the greatest disparities. For this RFQ, focus populations will include Black or African American, Hispanic, Latino, Latinx, and American Indian, Indigenous, or Alaska Native individuals. With these in mind, I'm now going to turn the floor over to Christina Corpy to share more on the service, uh, the outreach service and program model that HSD seeks to fund. Christina. Thank you, Chris, and good morning, everyone. 
This RFQ seeks to establish the aforementioned citywide outreach model through two interventions, one that is neighborhood specific and another for population specific outreach. The first is neighborhood specific outreach, which HSD expects to make up to three awards per neighborhood. The second intervention is population specific, which HSD expects to make one award per specific population. Next, I'll go into more detail on each, starting with neighborhood specific. This strategy will invest in seven neighborhood teams to provide outreach within specific geographic areas. This RFQ will build intentional collaboration with HSD regional coordinators and between selected agencies. Agencies may apply to serve a specific neighborhood or serve population specific groups citywide. Regardless of assignment, all selected agencies will work together to collectively address the unmet needs of our unsheltered neighbors. Street based care coordinators will directly refer individuals living out living alone or together in tents, encampments or other places not meant for human habitation aside from vehicles to shelter and permanent housing. Vehicle resident outreach will directly refer individuals living in vehicles to shelter, safe lots, and or permanent housing, provide vehicle repair, maintenance assistance, and or ensure vehicles are mobile and parked legally. Behavioral and mental health specialists will directly refer participants to licensed behavioral health and or physical health care provided services, Verify services are provided either where the individual resides or at the behavioral health provider location, coordinate care with any existing provider working with the individual, and refer to shelter and permanent housing. The key requirements for neighborhood specific providers include deploying assigned staff daily to engage unsheltered individuals in the assigned area, building trusting relationships, assessing needs, and matching individuals to appropriate services, working directly with the HSD regional coordinator and other agencies assigned to the neighborhood team to coordinate outreach services, attempt to engage individuals referred by the HSD regional coordinator or other agencies within 72 business hours and regularly engage them thereafter at a minimum of once per month, and exit an individual once they achieve stable permanent housing, once they are connected with a housing case manager at a shelter, if they decline services, or if they have not been engaged in six months. The neighborhood team areas correspond to Seattle City Council districts. HSD may revise these neighborhoods, especially to ensure citywide coverage or shifting needs. Agencies will apply for the neighborhood, the number of FTEs they plan to provide, and indicate which of the four outreach services they will provide. To address specific disparities, agencies will be selected to provide population specific outreach services citywide based on need and referrals from neighborhood outreach teams. A minimum of two full time employees are expected to respond to all city of Seattle neighborhoods where a referral is indicated. Specific populations include a Black, African American, Hispanic, Latino, Latinx, or American Indian, Indigenous, Alaska Natives who are unsheltered, and B, unaccompanied youth and young adults who are 24 years or younger and unsheltered. Key requirements for population specific agencies are as follows Deploy assigned staff daily, Monday through Friday, to engage unsheltered individuals citywide, build trusting relationships assess needs and match individuals to appropriate services. These include, but are not limited to, permanent housing, shelter, basic needs, treatment and recovery services, physical and or disability services, and vehicle assistance. Upon referral from an HSD regional coordinator or neighborhood outreach team, attempt to engage or contact the person or household referred within 72 business hours, attempting to meet the person at the location provided, and regularly engage thereafter, at a minimum of once per month. Attend weekly outreach meetings as applies based on the location of people referred from the neighborhood outreach teams and exit the individual or household from services when they have fully transitioned and are stable in their permanent housing, are connected with a housing case manager at a shelter, ultimately decline services, or have not been engaged for six months or more. 
Selected agencies must have a training plan for all staff using evidence-based or promising approaches that includes, but is not limited to, person-centered approach, trauma-informed care, motivational interviewing, skill-based assessments, and harm reduction practices. Agencies selected for behavioral and mental health outreach must have staff with a strong background in the field and or have a mental health or chemically, chemical dependency professional certification. Such agencies training plans should also use evidence based or promising approaches to serve individuals with mental and behavioral health and substance use disorder. Highly qualified agencies will have staff structures and supports that reflect the communities to be served through this award, including black indigenous and people of color individuals who have lived experience of homelessness. Highly qualified agencies will also demonstrate organization practices to solicit feedback from unsheltered individuals to inform and enhance service delivery. Agencies must serve participants of any gender, sexual orientation, age, race, ethnicity, and may be domestic or foreign nationals who are living unsheltered in the city of Seattle, including individuals who are living in RVs, vehicles, or on the street. Next, I'll pass it back to Nicole to share more on the RFQ application and submission instructions. Hey, thank you, Christina. Now we're gonna get into the details of the application. So it is really important that your application be complete and on time. We have an application checklist included in the guidelines and application. You will need to complete that and submit it with your application. You will also need to complete the two page application cover sheet. Please do make sure that is signed by your executive director. Complete the narrative response. Then finally, the completed Excel workbook that includes a number of items, the proposed program budget, proposed personnel detail budget, and summary of proposed staffing. All of those do need to be completed. Then if you are proposing a significant collaboration or subcontract with another agency, we do ask that you attach a signed letter of intent or collaboration from the agency's director or another authorized representative. In the application scoring, then the narrative portion of your application should fully answer each of the questions in the below sections. Each section will be scored separately and has a maximum number of points associated with each section. Then there is a maximum of 100 points available for all responses. Proposals will be evaluated against the rating criteria listed next to each section of questions as listed here on the slide. Highly rated proposals will describe how the applicants does, do meet all of those rating criteria. We do have a few different ways that you can submit your applications. You can submit them online or by email. We no longer accept faxed or in-person applications. Applications must be completed on time. HSD is not responsible for ensuring applications are completed or received by the deadline. Applications are due on Friday, July 19th at 12 p.m., which is noon. If you do choose to submit online, you will need to go to that online address. This information is included in the guidelines and application. We do encourage you to upload your application early in case you have any issues with your internet or computer. This is not an online application. You cannot save your work. You will need to complete the process in one go. You can upload files up to 100 megabytes. It accepts all types of documents, PDFs, docs, etc. The system does automatically generate an email confirming it has been received. If you do have any issues submitting your application, you should immediately contact our funding process advisor, Sola Plumacher, or Tracy Che at the emails listed here or in the guidelines and application. 
If you choose to submit your application by email, there is a very specific email that you need to use, and it's right here. And again, this information is in the guidelines and application. Your attachments are limited to 30 megabytes, and you do need to have a very specific subject heading, which is the full title of our RFQ, the 2024 Street-Based Outreach Services for Unsheltered Individuals RFQ. Any risks with submitting the proposal are borne by the applicant. You will receive an email acknowledging your application has been received. If you do not receive an email acknowledgement, please contact our funding process advisor, Sola Plumacher or Tracy Che, our business operations planner at the email addresses listed here. And here are some tips for the application process. Refer to the application submittal checklist, which is on page 14 of the guidelines and application. Follow the required format defined in the guidelines. Do not exceed the six page narrative response limit. Be specific, detailed, yet concise. Submit an accurate budget and be sure to double check your numbers. Utilize the application checklist on page 16 of the guidelines and application. And then review the online submission assistance page several times, which is also listed here. After your applications are submitted, HSD may come back and ask clarifying questions. We will do that via email and you will respond via email. The review committee recommends finalists. Then those recommendations go to the Human Services Department director for approval. Applicants are then notified and there is an appeal process, which I will cover next. And finally, the finalists will then begin to work with the HSD staff. The appeal process, the applicants have the right to appeal on the following grounds. Violations of policy or failure due to adhere to the guidelines or published criteria and or procedures established in the funding opportunity. The appeal deadline is four business days from the date of the written award or denial status. The HSD's director's written response will be made within four business days of appeal receipt, and the HSD's director's decision is final. And a review of the fiscal documents. If funding is awarded, agencies for which HSD has current financial and insurance documents will not be required to resubmit financial documents. Sorry, fiscal documents. Agencies for which HSD has incomplete or no financial or insurance documents, they will be notified by the coordinator and required to submit all requested documents within four business days from the date of the written request. Financial and insurance documents that may be requested are listed in the completed guidelines and application requirements part of the application. And if your agency has a fiscal sponsor, attach a letter of agreement from that agency's director or authorized representative and make sure the fiscal sponsor signs the application cover sheet. Here is a list of funding process resources and links available that are in the guidelines and application. And then finally, where to ask questions. So we are going to wrap up the presentation portion of this information session shortly, and then we will have time to ask questions today. You can also ask questions via email, so please send those to myself and my email is listed here and in the guidelines and application. There is a deadline for receiving questions, which is June 28th at 5 p.m. All questions and answers will be posted on HSD's funding opportunity website within five business days. Only written Posted answers are official responses. 
Any issues and or questions about the online submission system, you can contact Solo Plumacher, again, who is our funding process, policy and process advisor. Her phone number and email are listed here, or Tracy Che, our business operations planner. Okay, so now we will move to taking questions. And you are welcome to put your questions in the chat or raise your hand. I believe we will start at least with the questions that have been in the chat up until now. And as a reminder, we will only take questions related directly to this RFQ and no questions are considered official until they are posted in writing. Okay, so let me start working my way through the chat. Uh, give me just a moment as I scroll through and start at the very first one. Okay. Looks like the first question we have is, and I'm wondering, I'm guessing Christina or Chris will need to take this one. When the HSD regional coordinators lead the multiple parties, do they have, do they use an app based tool? I'm wondering specifically if they use the nav text, nav text product. Um, RevTex, NavApp, Homeless Traveler mobile app product. Um, we do still use RevTex, NavApp. Um, I'm not sure if that will be used for any sort of coordinating purposes. Um, we envision a lot of um, direct communication within the neighborhood teams on a very regular basis. Um, but yes, we still do use RevTex, NavApp. Great. Thank you. I'm going to take me off of the spotlight here so I can share the spotlight with those that need to answer questions. Okay. Uh, the next question. I well, this might be, I think this might be a question for me. If applying for more than one population or service area, will we have the same page limit? Uh, actually, I may pull in Natalie to help me answer that question. I know we put a six page narrative, but I believe that was per strategy. So if someone was applying for both, Natalie, could they exceed that six page limit? Um, let's take this one back to the team okay. and post an official response to that. Great, perfect. Thank you so much, Natalie. Oh, Nicole, I do see Melitza's hand up. Uh, yes, thank you for noticing. Um, there was a question asked in chat uh, previous to the one that you just responded to. And uh, that one is, in describing the scope of work for population-specific outreach, the RFP notes that proposals that clearly describe a plan to address significant needs among other populations will also be considered. Can you speak to what criteria will be used to evaluate whether other populations will be considered? I'm not sure who wants to take that. <laughs> I can step in uh, for a moment. We will uh, we will have that response posted within the next five business days. But I would say, um, you know, we're looking for the complete response to questions. So please describe how um, in your application you would propose to serve any other populations and look to the criteria that's included um, within the application questions as well. But uh, again, we'll have a, a formal response within the next five business days. Okay. Great. Thank you, Melitza, for catching the one that I missed. Okay. Who will be the referral sources for clients referred to our agency, just HSD or other street based outreach service providers? Christina. 
Yeah, so I, the other street-based outreach service providers working in the neighborhood team will refer individuals to each other as well. We envision like a care coordination group that um, receives referrals and determines which agency is best suited to address the needs of that individual. Um, there will be likely referrals coming from other entities that are not other providers, um, such as community members and businesses, um, as well as referrals directly to your agencies. Um, and so that uh, coordinating um, function of the team will be able to determine who's best suited to work with each individual, but referrals will be coming, um, I imagine, to each organization, but any that come directly to the regional coordinators, they will also bring that to the neighborhood team. Great, thank you, Christina. Uh, Christina or Chris, I think you might be up for this one as well. How much is awarded per organization? We plan to focus our proposal in two neighborhoods working with BIPOC communities, but would appreciate clarity as we build out the three required budgets. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, in terms of what HSD expects to award, Christina mentioned a little earlier in the presentation that um, we are expecting to make three awards per neighborhood regarding the neighborhood specific outreach intervention, uh, and then one award per specific population for population based. Um, I think in terms of the budget for those, we are really looking to um, agencies and applicants to provide that um, as one of the components of a complete application. So we can't speak to that currently um, at the, the dollar amount there, but we will be reviewing those uh, with the, the larger rating panel um, in July. Great, thank you, Chris. If we apply for one of the two population specific awards, but don't receive it, could we still receive funding through the neighborhood specific awards or would we be out of the running entirely? I don't know, Chris or Christina, who might want to take that one? Yeah, so uh, agencies can apply for both interventions. Um, just if if you do not uh, receive an award for one, that does not automatically disqualify you from the other. Um, and uh, yeah, we we encourage folks to uh, apply as they best see fit. Great, thank you, Chris. Christina, this one might be you for population specific. Are we able to focus on families? Our scope is in working with those with parents and children under 18. Wonder if we would need to expand to single adults to qualify. And I'm not sure if you feel like you can speak to that or if we might need to post that response later. I think we will need to post that response later unless Chris has a response for that. Yeah, let us check uh, back with the larger group and we'll have that uh, responded to within five days, five business days. Great, you all are asking some really great questions. We really appreciate it. So, okay, the next question we have, which also looks like it's probably for you, Christina, how is street-based care coordination defined? Does it require going out to tents encampments, et cetera, or could operating a drop-in space for unsheltered, unhoused individuals count as outreach? The goal of this RFQ is really that street-based piece. So we do envision um, all teams going out to tents and, encamp and encampments to work with individuals where they are at. Um, however, the care coordination does involve document uh, preparing, helping individuals get their documents, um, potentially helping with legal issues or housing issues that they may be um, working toward, and that could involve meet having meetings at a space um, or a drop-in space that in front of a computer. Um, but the the goal of this RFQ is really to get teams on the street working with individuals where they are at. Great, thank you, Christina. And I believe this next question is one that I can take. So will HMIS access be required or optional? Will there be access and to the training on HMIS or related reporting when reporting data on individuals encountered? 
Uh, yes, HMIS access and reporting will be required as far as training um, on reporting. I will say I can make the assumption that that will happen, but I will have to get back to you on the answer to that officially um, within five business days. Okay, so the next question we have is, would intensive outreach for the population specific to SUD qualify under this umbrella? Christina. I'm not sure which umbrella that question is referring to, um, but we will, uh, get an answer back in five days, we may ask for some clarification on that question. Okay, thank you. Uh, regarding receiving referrals, does this RSP require agencies to be on call to respond to particular people oh, and actually, or... Sorry, Nicole, I see yes. Melitza's hand up, so I yeah, just want to... Sorry, uh, I, not to interrupt you all, but um, I think the clarification to the previous question was uh, the umbrella population specific umbrella. Uh, the person commented back in chat. Understood. Thank you, Melitza. Um, the behavioral health um, outreach component we do expect to have uh, in each neighborhood. So it would not be a one of the population specific citywide um, services. It would be in all seven neighborhoods. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, regarding receiving referrals, does this RFP require agencies to be on call to respond to particular people and or encampments? Would these agencies be asked to be present at planned sweeps? Yeah, so uh, this RFQ does uh, require folks to coordinate and receive referrals from uh, either HSD regional coordinators or other agencies working in a neighborhood um, outreach team. Um, and again, respond to those referrals for individuals within uh, or attempt to respond uh, initially within 72 business hours. Um, I can say that agencies will not be required to uh, be at uh, sites to offer shelter um, for encampment removals. Um, once a site has been posted for removal, there will not be a requirement or uh, expectation for agencies to participate therein. Um, that will be handled by the unified care team. Um, I do want to say through the uh, neighborhood huddles, uh, agencies may be requested to uh, participate in encampment drawdown efforts. But again, uh, once sites have been posted, there will be no requirement uh, to be on site for that. Great. Uh, Chris, I'm I'm going to actually see if I can punt this question to you. And if you don't have an answer, we can respond in five days. So it's a more specific follow up question to the HMIS question. Um, we Heart Seattle has not been given training or access to HM HMIS in the past since we are privately funded. If we are awarded a portion of this fund, which I can assume would apply to anyone that's privately funded or hasn't had access in the past, can we assume we would receive training and access to HMIS? Absolutely. Uh, we uh, at HSD, I think, could work with agencies uh, about those training resources as well. And um, I think uh, one, we'll take this question back again and, and post a, a full response in the five business days. But, um, you know, the application question does ask for or agencies technical capacity using HMIS or other data tools. So that would be a good place to describe um, any needs therein or plan to staff up on that and also uh, make any consideration of that staffing and um, staffing resource needs within your budget as well. Great. Thank you. Okay. Will the agencies be allowed to follow the clients assisted after the street level outreach goals have been reached? In other words, stay in contact with clients to ensure they remain in remain stable in the housing. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think um, we really want to be intentional about this and uh, make sure that folks who are engaged can be put on the best path to permanent housing. We understand it's difficult, but I think a real uh, focus on this has been about making sure 
uh, before that exit is done, that someone has uh, fully transitioned and is stable in permanent housing. So um, there is a, a, a bit of a, a open-endedness there where we want to make sure folks are connected to supports down the line to keep them in um, their new home. Um, so absolutely. And um, yeah, that is, a, that is for sure the goal of this. And, and we'll uh, have that response written down as well. Great, thank you, Chris. So I believe we have we have taken care of all of the questions that have been in the chat. Is there anyone here that would like to raise their hand and ask a question verbally? Okay, it looks like we may have come to the conclusion of our question and answer section. Um, Chris or Christine, are you willing just to get back on with me as we wrap up? Okay, well, again, thank you so much everyone for being here. We really appreciate it. Again, this recording will be posted on the funding process page uh, when we are able to get it uploaded and the question and answers from today will be done in writing and we'll be giving written responses and will be posted within five business days as well. So thank you so much for everyone for attending. We can go ahead and stop the recording and I wish you all a very happy, uh, happy, sunny weekend ahead. So yes, enjoy your weekend ahead. Thank you again for all the work.